morning. How is everybody today? Morning. 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 All right. I like hearing. Are y'all as excited about the rain we got yesterday, even though it was a little bit? Wasn't that wonderful? God is so good. We needed it. Last weekend, when I, um, after I left here, I prayed all the way to Fuquay because it was so dry, and my daughter has a lot of animals. She even had to put sunscreen on her pig. I mean, that's pretty bad. <laughs> and it rained and rained and rained and rained for almost 24 hours there. It wasn't that much here. I almost got out of the car and danced a rain dance. I was so excited. And yesterday, same thing, I told Alan. I said, I want to go outside and dance. <laughs> and that would not have been a good idea. So, but it was so wonderful. So I'm so glad to see all of y'all today. Very thankful for the rain. It has cooled it down a little bit, but all of the grass, all of the plants, the animals, everybody that's working, it's cooled things down. And God is so, so good to us. Um, I read something yesterday that... Uh, it, it, was, it was really good, um, and surprisingly, it's kind of related to what Alan was, um, his message today. Our hard times can be holy times, close to God times, and wherever God is, good is being worked. A reminder, a reminder our hearts and body, our minds both need today. Life, this life, this life, it's not about me. It's about joining hands with Jesus to fulfill whatever tasks he sets before me and to share his love with all he brings my way. When life stirs up feelings of uncertainty, fear, exhaustion, let's hold on to the hope of what the Lord said in Psalm 145, 18. The Lord is near to all who call on him, to all who call on him in truth. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this time we can be together in your house, Lord. Because now this is the house of the Lord. Bring your Holy Spirit here. Touch someone's heart, Lord. And let us remember to be thankful of the, of the little things in life. The, the, the rain we got. Those little things that happen to us every day that we should just say, Thank you, Lord. Like when the light changes when you need it. Or the lawnmower starts when you, you didn't think it would. Just little things. We should be grateful for. We're grateful for the large things as well, Lord. We thank you for Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. We ask his blessings on everyone here today. We ask that hopefully Pastor Allen's words will touch someone's heart today and bring them to love Christ, to be as one with him. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's all stand up and praise the Lord this morning. You started us out with so much thanks. That was awesome. That was awesome. We are thankful. I'm thankful that pig got some sunscreen. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Precious Lord, take my hand, lead me on, let me stand. I am tired, I am weak, I am worn. Through the storm, through the 
that song and the story behind it but a little gentleman wrote it in 1932 his wife went into labor and she died and the little baby girl that was delivered died six hours later so distraught he threw himself on his knees and, and came up with that prayer to the good lord and that's where that song came from and you know words such as beautiful as that you know that came out of a lot of heartache but look at the lives and everything it's touched since then and it's so we identify with it so much today so i just thought that was interesting yeah, awesome. Thank you. Thank you. All to Jesus. Father, we are so thankful to be here today. Thank you for another day of life, Lord. Oh, God, we thank you that we were able to come to this place to worship you because you said we're two or more gathered together. You're here also. Lord, you are all powerful, all wise, all good, a God of love, a God of mercy, and you are our Heavenly Father. You created us in your image. You love us. You loved us enough to send your Son, Jesus Christ, who you loved, Lord, who was part of you, to come to this earth and suffer all things for us, Lord, because that's what had to be done, God. That's what it was going to take, the perfect sacrifice. And, Lord, he defeated. He defeated the devil. He was crucified, but he rose, God. By his stripes we're healed. This morning, oh, Father, I claim that victory. I lay all these prayer requests at your feet, Lord. We ask for your will to be done in all things, God. Lord, we know that your will is perfect. And, God, we pray for that. Lord, we pray for the sick and the dying, the hands caring for them. We pray, O oh Lord, for the widows, the widowers. We pray for the homeless, the hungry. We pray for the little animals, God, because you created them and you love them too, Lord. You filled the earth full of them before you ever thought of us. Lord, there's nothing too big or too small for you. You know even when a little sparrow falls. 
Oh, God, we ask you today to come into our hearts. Revive us again. Fill each heart full of your love. Let us be so filled with your Holy Spirit and wisdom, Father. Let us be on guard. Let us be ready at any time, God. And, and be able to, to stand up for you and do what needs to be done to live a holy and upright life. Not that we're any better than anybody, God, but we're different. And we got to claim that, God, and be proud of it. we got to make a stand, and we got to keep going one foot at a time, one step at a time, one day at a time, God, because that's all we have. And we're thankful for that. We're thankful for everybody that's here today. Bless each soul. Touch each person, God. Everybody that hears an ear, let him hear, because we know that you're blessed just to hear the word read to you. So, Lord, we claim that today. And, God, touch each one once again. And when we leave, let us not be afraid to share your love and to share that love to everybody, God. In Jesus' sweet and holy name and for our sakes, I ask it. Amen. 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 All right, since we're standing, let's, uh, it's Sunday. Introduce yourself to your neighbor. Do the people out there. Do, introduce yourself. Say, hey, glad you're at church.
morning. We're going to look at godliness in the, godlessness in the last days. Don't have to look very far to find it. The, uh, are the last days here? Are they? You know, I had, coming across this scripture, I, 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 I preach it from time to time, and the truth of the scriptures change the, stays the same, but the, the names and the event change. You could just about preach this one every week because the names and the events just continually changing. The last days are actually a period of time that begin with the life and ministry of Jesus. When we think about the last days, we think about the days when it's, it's coming and everything is, is, is going to go to pot, but it actually started with Jesus. So 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 1 through 9. But mark this, there will be terrible times in the last days. People will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful, proud, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, without love, unforgiving, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not lovers of good, treacherous, rash, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than God, having a form of godliness but denying its power, have nothing to do with such people. They are the kind that worm their way into the homes and gain control over gullible women who are loaded down with sins and are swayed by all kinds of evil desires. Always learning but never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Just as Jonas and Jambres opposed Moses, so also these teachers oppose the truth. They are men of depraved minds who, as far as the faith is concerned, are rejected but they will not get very far because in the case of these men, their folly will be clear to everyone. First thing he says, but mark this, there will be terrible times in the last days. Like I said, these last days does not always refer to future days when things worship, but it's also the present. Because if you think about it, we are living in the future from the time this was written. Paul wrote this a letter to Timothy somewhere between 64 and 66 A.D. It was during his second imprisonment and just shortly before he died in 67 A.D. And although this was Paul's prophetic appeal to Timothy, I'm fairly sure that it never crossed Paul's mind that some 1960 years later we would be here watching prophecy be fulfilled. 1 Timothy 4.1 says the Spirit clearly says that in later times some will abandon the faith and follow deceiving spirits that are taught by demons. That time is here. This worsening intensified at the resurrection of Jesus and the coming of the Holy Spirit and it will continue to worsen until Jesus returns. And the reason is in 1 Timothy 4.1 that the Spirit clearly says from later times that and will abandon the faith and follow the seeming spirits taught by the demons. Then 2 Corinthians 4.4 4 says the God of this age has blinded the minds of believers so that they cannot see the light of the gospel which displays the glory of Christ who is the image of God. <clears throat> Satan is the God of of this age. And we have given him free reign over everything. We took him out of schools in 1964 when prayer was taken out. Since then, he has taken over the entertainment industry. He has taken over the media. He has taken over the government. All because as Christians, we won't fight against him. He has gained control over our technology Allowing what once were just small groups of racist, terrorist, human traffickers, child molesters, all kinds of deviants, drug dealers, you name it. He has turned them now into a huge underground network through this technology. He has blinded the minds of unbelievers. John 16, 2 says, They will put you out of the synagogue 
In fact, the time is coming when anyone who kills you will think that they are offering a service to God. That time is here. For a long time, we were just hearing out of the uh, radical Islamists that are on a rampage to kill uh, infidels. And although this is still going on with hundreds of them crossing the uh, uh, borders every day, but now Hamas, who is financed by Iran, Yemen's Houthis, Lebanon's Hezbollah, and others are trying to wipe Israel off the face of the earth. And our government is refusing uh, arms to Israel. There will be terrible times in the last days. Verses 2 through 4 says, People will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful, proud, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, without love, unforgiving, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not lovers of good, treacherous, rash, conceited, lovers of pleasure, rather than lovers of God. Let's look at this a section at a time. People will be lovers of themselves. We have become a narcissistic society. It's all about me, 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 me. Hey, ain't I great? Look at the entertainment industry. I know entertainers that if you don't tell them how good they are, they will tell you. I have a friend who's now a friend, but for years when I was in the entertainment industry, we hated each other. I hated him because he didn't care that I was me. And I, he hated me because I didn't care that he was him. It took Jesus to let me know that I'm, I'm nothing more than a sinner saved by grace, and I'm still ashamed of some of the things I did back then. People will be lovers of themselves. People will be lovers of money. I told you last week about something I know, and, uh, and some that have money, and, but I know that some others that, that have money, and you'd never know it. You know, they don't come driving in their fancy cars or live in extravagant houses. When they walk into the room, you would have no idea. But they are the exception. You know, those others, they're going to let you know how rich they are. They're not going to come driving up in a Ford. Even a Cadillac, that's just a start of a rich folks' car. They think they can buy their way out of anything with that money. And I have some sad news for them. Satan is going to take that money and he's going to lock the door to hell right behind them. They're boastful and they're proud. They're quick to tell you what they have done, what they have got that you don't. You can boast about the good things they have done. James 4.16 says, As you boast and brag, all such boasting is evil. The Bible says a lot about boasting. And none of it's good unless you're boasting on the Lord and what he's done for you. But he has even more to say about pride. Just a couple of uh, things in, in Proverbs 11. When pride comes, then comes disgrace. In Proverbs 16, pride goes before destruction. They're boastful. They're proud. They're abusive. If you don't believe people are abusive, just post a political opinion on Facebook and see how quickly you become abused. You know, I have had to limit my time on social media lately just because of that. They're disobedient to their parents. Children today are being raised with no consequences for their action. They know time out. And losing phone privileges for a day. I wish my mama had put me in time out. <laughs> they have no idea of the eternal ramifications of sin. In September of 2020, back in the height of COVID, there was a report out of Memphis, Tennessee that reported that there could be a direct connection between schools being closed and violent crimes committed by kids. The uh, juvenile court judge Dan Michael said back then, while there are fewer children in the juvenile detention center, 
The ones that were there were charged with very violent crimes. He said that at the time, in his jail, he had, two, he had three murderers, two reckless homicides, and eight or ten carjackers. But then the last day, they will be disobedient to their parents. My mama knew how to keep me obedient. I guess I still hurt. <laughs> people will be ungrateful. More and more, we see people that we are trying to help take advantage of our generosity. As a church, we're the hands and feet of Jesus. We are supposed to go out and help those in need. And I have witnessed some of those that we have tried to help just continue to ask for more and more and more and more. They don't ask for things that they need. They ask for things that they want. I had a person one time, I took them some kind of candy that they really like. I took a big bag of it. They said, well, you could have brought me a Mountain Dew, too. This is serious. I'm serious. We, we have to stop helping some people because they're just so ungrateful. And they take advantage of us. But they're the ones that talk badly about us now. If you don't believe it, just go to Google Reviews. I can't tell you their name, but you can see it there on Google Reviews. There's one of them that we tried to help. But took advantage of it. Showing disregard for all things holy. People are becoming extremely cruel and evil. The world has become an immoral place. It has become unholy. Starting in verse 3, it says, Without love, unforgiving, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not lovers of good, Treacherous, rash, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying its power. I'm so glad we have a loving church. You know, we love each other, warts and all. <laughs> we've had disagreements here, but so far we've been able to work through them. But outside these doors, we're seeing a world without love. Many of those we're trying to love, just, they just refuse to love us back. It seems like we can't be friends anymore with those that think and believe differently. And that's, like I said, I, I have limited my time on social media for that reason alone. I've seen the side of people that I never would have thought I'd ever see. There are people out there now that I love but I just don't like them very much. I'm sure you all got those folks. We love them, but we can't stand to be around them. The Bible clearly says it right here. They will be without love. They will be unforgiving. If you're without love, there's no way you're going to forgive someone. I'm glad Jesus was not unforgiving. But if we expect Jesus to forgive us, we got to do some forgiving of our own. No matter how hard it is, they will be slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not lovers of good, treacherous, rash, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. I'm going to pick on you golfers here. How many golfers we got in here? Uh, uh, a couple, yeah. <laughs> Uh, Landis, uh, <laughs> yeah, he owns a set of golf clubs. <laughs> but golfers like Sunday morning the best because it's not crowded. You know, all the Christian golfers are in church. <laughs> I have had two different people tell me, two different men tell me, they had to quit golfing because it became their God. They... They only golfed on Sunday morning and they quit going to church completely. They became lovers of pleasure. Lovers of pleasure of the game. But it's not only golf. My grandson, I don't know if he sold it yet or if he's still for sale, but he's got a $20,000 fishing boat. I think he sold it. He did that because fishing had become his God. 
And he realized that. And I can't tell you how proud I am of him. What he did, he was taking time away from his family. He was taking time away from his, his time with God. And anything, it don't have to be fishing or, or, or golf, anything that takes precedent over God becomes your idol. Whether it's golf, whether it's fishing, counting your money, drugs, alcohol. But it is a form of godliness and you deny its power. It has the power to keep you out of heaven. Verse 5 says, have nothing to do with them. Have nothing to do with them. Those things that do that, those people that uh, that keep you uh, focused on other things. These are the last days. We have tried to love these people. We have tried to share Jesus with these people. It has become clear that these people have rejected the Lord. And it's time to take the, shake the dust off of our feet like Jesus told us to do and leave them to their own worldly desires. There's people that I hate to do that to because I love them. But they just, they just won't listen. They just won't believe. Verses 6 and 7. They are the kind who worm their way into the homes and gain control over gullible women who are loaded down with sins and are swayed by all kinds of evil desires. Always learning, but never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Paul is speaking to the victims here where these people that would come in and prey on these weak willed women by undermining their moral convictions. He says, oh, they were always learning, but they never quite grasp the truth of the cross. And when the devil starts subverting the homes, he starts destabilizing the church. He wants to undermine their confidence in God's word. And it's not just the weak-willed women anymore. I feel like there's probably more weak-willed men out there these days than women. But there's going to be plenty of religion in the last days. Plenty of religion. But it will be just an imitation. It will be a form of godliness without the life-changing power of God. The Bible continues to be the best-selling book in America. Yet the crime rate is constantly going up. Problems seem to multiply. In verses 8 and 9, just as John A's and John Bray's opposed Moses, so also these teachers oppose the truth. They are men of depraved mind who, as far as the faith is concerned, are rejected, but they will never get very far because, as in the case of this man, their folly will become clear to everyone. Paul is comparing these apostate teachers to the Egyptian, uh, the Egyptian magicians, Jonas and John Brace. They, they're the ones that opposed Moses by imitating everything he did. Satan is an imitator. And his imitation gospel, along with his imitation church, will spread in the last days. We see this happening now all over America. These prosperity preachers preaching and churches asking to see your W-2 form to make sure that you're given all you need to be given. But if we continue to preach the truth, if we continue to teach the truth, if we continue to share the truth, we'll be able to expose those of depraved minds. And just as Moses overcame these imitators by the power of God and the coming judgment, Jesus will overcome these latter-day deceivers too. Verses 10 through 15. You, however, know all about my teaching, my way of life, my purpose, faith, patience, love, endurance, 
persecutions, sufferings. What kind of things happened to me in Antioch, Iconium, and Lystra? The persecutions I endured. Yet the Lord rescued me from all of them. In fact, everyone who wants to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will be persecuted. While evildoers and impostors will go from bad to worse, deceiving and being deceived. But as for you, continue in what you have learned and have become convinced of because you know that those whom you learned it and how from infancy you have known the Holy Scriptures which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. We will be persecuted. We are in the last church age. We are the church of Laodicea. You can read about it in Revelation chapter 3. There are seven physical churches there that also correlate with the seven church ages. The church as a whole is not on fire for God anymore. It's described as being lukewarm. And because the church is lukewarm, God says, I'm going to spew them out of my mouth. We have to continue to be on fire for the Lord. But being on fire for the Lord brings about persecution. And I believe in our lifetime, and most of us are in our last 15 to 30 years, but I believe in our lifetime we will see religious persecution the likes of which we have never seen in America. I believe churches will be told what they can and cannot preach. We're already told we can't say certain words because it's not politically correct. You can't say certain things because it hurts someone's feelings. If I tell you you're going to hell, I don't, I'm not trying to hurt your feelings. It's meant to save your soul. If you've never accepted Jesus, will you do so today? If you haven't, you're going to hell and there's nothing that I or anybody else can do for you. All we can do is tell you that Jesus died on the cross so you don't have to. We're going to open up this altar right now and I'd be happy to pray with you if you'd like to come down. But if you ever want to bow your heads and close your eyes just for a minute or so. We'll get the praise team up while we open up the altar. If you'd like to come pray.
Let's sing this next verse with us. with our tithes and offerings on the way out the door today. Sisters of Strength have a meeting at 2 o'clock today at Ernest Mike Presbyterian Church. So you ladies, if you've never been to one, I encourage you to go because from what I hear, they have a large time. <laughs> and of course, they're without men, so they can do that. <laughs> but when, 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 they, when they leave us alone unsupervised, it's not our fault for what we get into. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, um, I think that's it. We don't have a whole lot of things to mention. We do want you to just pray for everybody in the church. There's a couple of folks that are having procedures done this week. Uh, a couple of folks waiting for some uh, test results from last week. We just, you, the Lord knows who they are. You don't need their names, but God knows if you'll just lift them all up in prayer. And, uh, and we'll just give God the glory and the honor. Because he's going to take care of them. Let's sing a song. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary. Lord God, help us to be a sanctuary for a lost and dying world in this community, Father. Put one in front of us this weekend that we can tell about Jesus and what he's done for us. And it's his name we pray. Amen. Amen. Y'all love each other on the way.